Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Notable Nightshades. I'm Beth, and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth, as usual, but we also have Toby as a special guest today to tell us about their recipes. So, Elizabeth, what was your recipe? Okay. Oh, oh wait. Oh. I was going to mention, sorry. I apologize. How rude of me. But the nightshades, what are nightshades? We were just looking at the nightshades that were not poisonous. Um, and a short list is, includes tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, eggplant, tomatillos, and goji berries. So there you go. Those were your options. Yes, we did. I assume we all avoided the poisonous ones. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, I'll share mine. I was pretty excited because I got several nightshades involved in my recipe. Um, my recipe comes, as you all know, I love my Midwest Living magazine. They always have really good recipes. And so um, I made a tomato, eggplant, and zucchini. Um, it's spelled T-I-A-N. Tian, Tian, I do not know. It says that it is named for the shallow earthenware vessels in which they're traditionally baked. It comes from Southern France. Um, so this was very easy. I will say I do not typically like eggplant, um, but I thought I'd give it a try. You know, it's fine. So um yeah so basically you have um okay so what you do is you have a skillet and you put some olive oil in it and then you throw in um two sliced onions and eight cloves of sliced garlic and you just kind of let that all get cooked up and then um in your dish that you're baking your tian in or whatever you um drizzle a little bit of olive oil and then you add the onion and garlic that you've cooked and then you have a couple sprigs of fresh thyme and you sprinkle the fresh leaves on there and then it's super easy you just have tomatoes zucchini and eggplant that you've cut into quarter inch thick slices um and then you're supposed to you know arrange them like it showed in the picture alternating it did say it's best if they are like pretty uniform in thickness because they're going to all cook at the same time. And um, yeah, you just nestle them in the dish. Um, it says if it's rectangular, arrange them in rows. Mine was rectangular. So that was super easy to do. And then you drizzle some more olive oil on top. And you're supposed to tuck in a few more sprigs of thyme, in, whatever. And then you're supposed to cover it super tightly with foil. You bake for about an hour and then you remove the foil and bake for 15 to 20 minutes more until the juices are all bubbly and the veggies are kind of crispy and um, worked great. Um, I actually ended up eating this with like some bread that I spread goat cheese on and then I kind of like, yeah, to make it a meal, uh, like a summery meal. It was very good. It also suggested you could serve it like over rice or orzo, which I thought would also be really good. That would, I, I didn't think of that at first, but I think over orzo would be really nice. And um, it was so easy and good and really great use of summer veggies. And the eggplant turned out just fine. You know, it's still not my favorite, but um, it was good. And um, I do think using like really fresh good veggies for this as it often is true for most summer dishes is is the like like I you know I had some really nice tomatoes that were fabulous so um that's what I made and uh it was good and I would keep it in mind to do again especially this time of year and um yeah I really liked it uh and I'll just hold up the picture one more time that's pretty much what mine looked like except square so that's what I made did you cook it in the oven, Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I baked it. I can't remember the temperature, but it, I'll yeah, when I share the when Katie includes the recipe, it's it, it's like pretty low. It was like three fifty or something just for for that time. Yep. 
I was just wondering if there was a different method for summer, you know, if you could put it on a grill and kind of get it into a roasting temperature situation or an air fryer. Yeah, I'm sure you could mess with it. I, since it was the first time I was making it, I just followed what it said. Um, But yeah, yeah. Well, it's beautiful. I love that it looks impressive, but you said that it's easy. That's always nice. So yeah, Yeah. looked really yummy. I say that every time, but it did. (laughs) Yeah, it it was, it, and it really, it's one of those ones that I always like it when it looks like they say it's going to look. It's always like, I'm like, all right. Uh, Okay, Toby, tell us about your nightshades recipe. Thanks, Elizabeth. And uh, hi, mom. Um, Today, I, uh, I want to show you guys this book. Uh, treasured Polish recipes for Americans. Uh, this was my grandma's cookbook, and I often go to it when I'm trying to cook some of the more traditional Polish dishes. Um, I do stuffed cabbage every year, and stuffed cabbage is meat and rice wrapped in cabbage with a tomato sauce on top. And sure, you can just open a can of tomato sauce, but I thought I'd consult the book to find what their tomato sauce is and it's fantastic so uh it's butter flour meat stock onion tomatoes and sugar and i'll just read you the instructions because a lot of the recipes in this book are very very short instructions implying that the person cooking should have a lot extra knowledge to to cook from So this one is melt one tablespoon butter and add flour. When it bubbles, add the meat stock. Simmer tomatoes and onions in the other tablespoon of butter for 10 minutes. Rub through a sieve and add to the flour mixture. Salt to taste, add sugar if desired. So what this ends up being is like a tomato gravy. So when I make it, I get my big pan out. I cut up all my tomatoes and onions, let them simmer. And if you've ever cooked tomatoes on a stovetop, you get liquid. You get a lot of liquid. And then those onions start to get translucent. And then you dump it all into the strainer. And this is, it takes a long time to use a wooden spoon to push everything through the strainer because basically you just want left behind the tomato skins all of the flesh of the tomato and even those translucent onions can be pushed through the sieve into the uh into the bowl that you've reserved that stuff with and then yeah you start with the gravy butter and flour meat stock you make your roux and then you add the tomato sauce to it and it comes out super mild and sweet it is not like anything you can get in a can because you are using fresh tomatoes fresh onions and so i always i pour it over the stuffed cabbage bake the cabbage in the oven comes out great i usually reserve a little bit to be used uh to pour on the cabbage after it comes out and it's a fantastic recipe uh i go by it i make it every time i do that and uh yeah, leave it to the Polish to make a tomato gravy. It's just, it's really good. And don't forget the sugar. The sugar is really important. It gives it a great balance. So uh, yeah, that's what, uh, that's my favorite thing to do with the tomatoes, with the nightshades. So Toby, do you make the cabbage rolls a particular time of year or for a special event? Or is it just when you feel like spending time in the kitchen doing that? Usually a holiday. Um, we try and do as many Polish dishes as we can for Easter uh, okay. in the spring. Because um, as I just mentioned to you, I don't really turn my oven on during the summer. So <laughs> it's yeah. a fall or a winter or a spring uh, dish. And yeah, we really enjoy it like that. I usually make uh, two pans. Um, and I use the uh, stuffed cabbage recipe in here as well. So it's all traditional Polish. This one's cool. It's uh, first printed in the 1940s. This edition is from 1981. And uh, yeah, it's a great book to use. And uh, so, yeah. When you send us your recipe, will you also include the one for the stuffed cabbage too? Yeah. So yeah. Can, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I will tell you, <laughs> the stuffed cabbage recipe calls for um, cooking it uncovered, but then putting bacon on top of all of the stuffed cabbage. 
<laughs> which it turns out great. Um, traditionally, the way I learned it from my mom was to cover it at first uh, in the oven so that it doesn't lose the juices. Um, mm -hmm. but the addition of the bacon on the top gives it a lot of nice extra fat and juice to cook in. And then that tomato sauce drips down in there too and mixes with that salty, smoky bacon. It's, it's really good. Hey, Toby, do you store the tomato sauce? Like, do you make it in the summer with fresh tomatoes and then um, keep it for later? Have you ever done that? I have not. Um, as I'm talking through this uh, and after spending some a little bit of maintenance time with my plants yesterday, uh, I think it would be a good idea to do. Or, you know, by by September, it's going to be cool enough to use That's the oven. True. So I could do it then. Yeah. I, I don't can it, though, Katie. Okay, well, I'm not a canner either. I was thinking maybe you could freeze it, but um, I'm excited to try this because I always end up having an abundance of tomatoes at the end of the season, and this would be great use for it. My husband's Polish, so I'm excited to try this recipe. I haven't made tomato gravy before, so uh, that will be new for me, and I really like that book that you shared with us, so thank you, Toby. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Katie or Beth, I don't know. Yeah, it'll be Katie. I will share my recipe. Um, my, so keeping on theme here, my favorite um, nightshade of all time is one of my favorite foods of all time. That is the tomato. Um, I love eating tomatoes, growing tomatoes. Um, it's just like one of my favorite things. And it is tomato season right now. The tomatoes have started to come in, including one of my very favorite varieties, which I brought to share with you. This is a dad sunset tomato. I love these. Uh, they're really hardy. They don't split. They come in early. They are abundant and they are perfect for this recipe that I am going to share with you today, which is um, from the website loveandlemons.com. And this is for tomato salad with gremolata. So um, the first thing that you do is you make your gremolata. And I've never done that before. So I was excited to try this. It's parsley based. And that was very convenient for me because I have a flourishing parsley plant in my garden right now too. So you take a big bunch of fresh parsley, chop that up, and then you mix in two teaspoons of lemon zest, a grated garlic clove, and then some sea salt. And you just mix that all together in a bowl and set it aside to rest. Then you make your tomato salad. So um, in a large bowl, this calls for about a pound and a half of tomatoes. Um, I like to use just a different variety, as many different varieties of tomatoes in something like this as I can. So like big, small, yellow, red, orange, whatever you can get your hands on. It makes the salad more exciting to eat and prettier, I think. So um, if you can get a bunch of those you cut them up, the larger ones into wedges, smaller ones in half, and then um, add some thinly sliced red onion, red wine vinegar, olive oil, salt, some grounds of fresh pepper. Toss that all together to coat in your bowl, and then you arrange it on a platter, sprinkle it with your gremolata and some chopped fresh basil. And then if you want a little bit more salt and pepper to taste and you serve it. So I think when it's done this way, it's like a really excellent summer side salad. But I like eating tomato salad for lunch and dinner. So I suggest adding um, some burrata, some cottage cheese, maybe some fresh mozzarella, or even just some crusty bread with some good butter on it or goat cheese anything like that to just make it like a heartier salad. Um, but otherwise it's wonderful as a side. So this is something I'll just make this like all summer. So I'm looking forward to um, having tomato salad. Well, I think I'm gonna make it for dinner tonight, honestly. So, yay. Yep. What's the fresh tomato? <laughs> yeah, so good. Like, I think remolata is so good too. I have made that before similarly. Um, and it's, it just was like it just comes together and it just adds so much to to a salad or to you know whatever you're throwing it on it sounds delicious yeah i really love that it was new to me so uh, it was exciting to find that like new flavor profile and be like oh i have all this stuff all the time so right <laughs> right cool. 
Yeah, the gremolata is something. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't have known it by name, but I've I'm made it before just by chopping it up and chopping up parsley. So yeah, yeah, tasty. Do well, you do you get most of your tomatoes from your garden, Katie, or no? I do occasionally in the beginning of the season. I do have to cheat a little bit and go to the farmers market because I start mm -hmm. to get like cravings for certain tomatoes. Sure. But right now, I think I'm I'm beyond that, and we're fully into tomato season. So that's always really nice. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Beth, tell us about your nightshade yes. recipe, please. All righty. Well, I pulled out. A recipe from I know I've showed you um the the new basics cookbook but this was my first kind of foodie cookbook um and it's actually I got it 40 years ago it's signed from my friend who gave it to me so even before I got married and stuff so so it's kind of like my really my first cookbook of mine um, and it's all falling apart, but um, I pulled this out. So eggplant, I used eggplant and this is an eggplant salad with basil. Um, Elizabeth, I didn't ask you if you pre-salted your eggplant because that is a critical step when you're using eggplant. You did, right? Um, it did call to like salt and pepper everything. Yeah. Yes, and for prior to tucking it into yes. the dish. Yes. So, but you, you need to, salt your eggplant and let the bitter you know uh liquids come out so what's funny about this recipe is that it explains that at the beginning and i know for sure in my in my uh early cooking years i did not do that because i remember making this and it was horrible so it because it's so bitter but here's what you do and it's delicious. And I also have some if any of you want to try it. So you this and I rearranged the uh, quantities when I wrote it because this called for three eggplants. I used two calls for olive oil, coarse salt. I use kosher salt, uh, garlic, uh, yellow onion, which I used a um, medallia, uh, black pepper freshly ground black pepper, a cup of fresh basil leaves and juice of two lemons. So in my changing up, I adjusted it. But anyway, so you line, you do the salt thing, you and you you cut them into one and a half inch chunks, uh, squares, and then salt generously in a layer in a colander for like 30 to an, minutes to an hour. Um, then you rinse it all off and you've got to make sure you dry it real well. And then you line your roasting pan with foil, um, put the eggplant in, toss with half of the olive oil, so about a third of a cup, the coarse salt, the minced garlic, bake for about 35 minutes until it's soft but not mushy, cool slightly, and then you take the rest of the olive oil and saute the onions. So they're very tender for like 15 minutes on uh, covered. And then you add the onions to the eggplant. You season generously with black pepper, add the fresh basil, which I sh made a chiffonade of those, but it did say chop. Um, lemon juice, adjust seasoning, serve at room temperature. It was delicious. For anyone who's not sure about eggplant, I would love for you to try this. I was going to say, I think this is the recipe. And again, the, the eggplant in mine was fine, um, but not amazing. And so I think perhaps this is the recipe I need to try to, to change my opinion on eggplant. <laughs> yeah. I would also like to try it just because I'm not a big eggplant fan. And there are there are some things that I've had it in that it's been okay. But same, I've never been like, wow, this is amazing. So I definitely would try your eggplant for sure. Okay. It's it's so light, bright, and, and it's just really good. I was just, I just thought it was funny that, oh, because I was, when as I was looking at it, I was like, how come they don't tell you to salt it? Well, they do it at the beginning. Here it is and say with each of our recipes cut it as it says and then do the salt so yeah it's a big mistake if you don't do that but anyway um if we don't have any other comments 
I appreciate you all sharing your recipes. And I'm going to take us out. So um, thanks for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be talking about Simply the Zest. We look forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe.